as you can see here, we already um, covered some of the uh, some of the parts that will then be white, like the uh, the kneecap here and this rim, uh, with um, something that should look like a rusty undercoat or like a yeah well rusty surface. And um, we have uh, spared out this uh, this kneecap, so I will show you how to reach this um, effect on, on there. For this, you will have to mix uh, scotch brown with uh, some reddish, more reddish brown, like vermin brown, as you see here. And um, this will give us a slightly reddish but pretty dark uh, color. And uh, this we will apply on the whole surface that we want to, to be white armor. So yeah, it's a very nice orange-red tone. Okay, once this is dry, you mix uh, more vermin brown into the mix. Um, you can nearly go for a pure vermin brown like this. Mm -hmm. And then you um, start to, to place it on, on the surface here uh, with a dabbing motion like that. So no smooth uh, surface, but rather uh, irregular surface, much like uh, what you get when you observe uh, rusty surfaces in general. Like mm -hmm. this. Yeah, really nice. And as a last step, you mix a little bit white into the, the mix, with them brown. And uh, with this, you even add some more of these dabs. The difference should not be as, as big as here. Um, a bit less is better. Yeah, mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, and that uh, yeah, that is what we are what we are looking for actually. It uh, you will see why it makes sense in the end. Um, it is a little bit like thinking what uh, thinking in layers. First um, layer will be this, and on top of that, the color will come that then will be chipped off. So that's why we have to paint uh, paint the lowest uh, part or material first. Yeah, uh, we will use a special color for for the white. Uh, it's yes. it's a water based weathering color. Yes, it's this from, one here. Yeah, from from Two Earth. It's a whitewash. Um, it's it's very nice because you can just apply it after um, you've done the rust color and then just chip it off bit by bit. Matt will show you that in detail. We will do that uh, by using our airbrush again. <laughs> um, we do this because the the finish is just much smoother and looks uh, really really very convincing when you do it with the airbrush. Because after all, that is more or less what uh, is done in reality uh, in the factory. <laughs> Uh, Warjack, <laughs> Warjack <workshop>. factory, <laughs> Warjack factory. But for this, we uh, we will have to have to um, mask um, actually this blue portion here of the armor because we don't want uh, to to spoil it. Also, the shoulders, everything that is not will not be uh, white armor. We will have to cover. Okay. In order to mask stuff, we will need a couple of components. Um, one is the this here. It's a uh, maskul by the company Humbro. It is a, um, I don't know, uh, a latex milk, and it will create a, like a rubber, rubber-like um, layer very quickly, actually. Yeah, it's a nice stuff. Sometimes it smells a bit nasty when it gets old, but uh, it's really handy to use. Yes, another thing that you can use is the, the uh, blue tech here. Um, it goes by a couple of names, actually, uh, also Patafix. This is very good to, to do, to mask stuff up very quickly and then uh, you can recycle it also. And uh, for bigger um, operations, like masking operations, uh, you can use this kind of tape. It's uh, like a paper tape from the paint supply. We also show you all these three components because sometimes you have a bigger object to mask, like a, like a tank. And uh, yeah, for this for this uh, project here, it's a little bit of overkill, but uh, <laughs> I think we will give it a try anyways. What you also have to have, um, is a rubber brush, much like this. It's a clay shaper. 
Um, you can get them in uh, art supply stores. Uh, and you see the tip here is, uh, is just a rubber tip. And that way you will not uh, have to waste uh, your brushes uh, on the muscle. Because everything that is gets in contact with that will eventually <laughs> be destroyed. And uh, now we just get right to it. Take a little bit on our clay shaper and just mask it up pretty generously in here. And with this, you gently guide the uh, the mask hole to um, yeah to the um, to the border of the two uh, armor pieces and um, everything that you will cover will keep will keep its uh, its color so yeah and it's uh, it's a lot faster than doing that by t with tape especially if you have all those round uh, round shapes and yes this really floats into every every little corner and that way you will be done in, in a few seconds that's enough for this part how long does it uh, how long does it take the muscle to cure um, i think it's around uh, well it's pretty thick in this area here <laughs> yeah uh, i think it will take around uh, 15 minutes or so all right to entirely cure uh, when you make it very very thin actually it's it's, it's much less time okay for <clears throat> the next step would be to use the the blue tag and to make something like a little tape out of that and to place it around the shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fast. So here. It's a good thing because it really adapts to the to the surface that you want to attach it to. And uh, it's also good to take uh, some kind of tool and then to um, to push it into these um, these areas here closer to to the model and to the surfaces that we want to cover. Okay, now here. And you see with the with the tool or you know clay shaper or whatever you, you use you can also use a sculpting tool you can push it really close to the to the area that yeah, you want to cover. it's really nice to see how, how good it works it looks even smoother than uh, that panzer putty stuff the liquid stuff mm -hmm. really nice that way only the the part that we want to spray will be um, uncovered and this is exactly what we want to do i think i will continue uh, putting this on um, and we will be back when also this little kneecap here is uh, covered up. Okay, it is alive. <laughs> not very pretty, but uh, that's not so important. It uh, will do the job. Um, so yeah, as you see, the mask hole covers the areas that are very difficult to reach with uh, both the blue tag and the, the paper, the tape. The tape. So this is exactly what we need. And also some of the parts like uh, here, it would be difficult to reach the, um, the contour of the, of the round with just the blue tag. That's why I first put on the mask hole, then the blue tag, and this is just a safety measure. Also, what's important to mention is that you always try to build these, uh, you know, kind of angle to, the, to, these, uh, to the blue tag, for example. So when the air uh, and the, with that, the color will come from the airbrush, it will be caught by uh, these, so you, yeah, you don't sprinkle over the whole thing. Yes, yes. So don't, yeah. So it doesn't escape here, and then sprays on the model where you don't want it to be. All right. So now we take the scraping paint from True Earth and we'll put it in our um, airbrush. It says that you don't have to thin it. It is actually a water-based uh, resin. Um, the color. So <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, um, one thing, <laughs> safety first, again. Yeah, the mask. especially when spraying special paints, it's, yes. it's better uh, to... They're to special for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now we simply trust in our work before and uh, 
Tak. Actually, this is just uh, this is just air. Um, I spray it in order to dry the, the paint already on the surface. Actually, make this uh, rocking motion with the with the color, um, so the color floats more evenly out of the uh, the gun, because here it is most likely to clog, and the needle, you can see maybe, and um, that's why it's good to kind of sometimes to mm -hmm. yeah kind of push the color out. Another layer because it was a bit too thin. I could see through the the color. It's interesting to sometimes to apply more color, especially if it, if it's, uh, if it's a effect color like this one, uh, because then uh, the the chips that will chip off the paint might be uh, look more realistic yeah, because they have yeah some depth to them, so it's a bit thicker. Also, if you build this co uh, color up a bit thicker, you ha can also wash it down with a wet brush and just get rid of a bit of the paint, so it's a really nice effect. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not easy to tell if the color is uh, ready yet. Um, generally, I wanted to use the air from the airbrush more than the hair uh, dryer, for example, because the warm air might affect the effect color when you spray it on. I think I would just go with the air from the uh, from the airbrush to uh, to um, dry it out, and uh, yeah, then we will be back in a second for the next step. Okay, perfect. So we added a tiny little back to the to the color now in order to create a bit darker color to to bring some contrast in here mm -hmm. in a simple way. <laughs> the difference is not so big. Okay, now this is this is it. Uh, I will now start to remove the the blue tag and all the masking uh, stuff, and uh, then we will start to work on the on the white. Be careful. Good to really to be very careful with that. You don't want any parts to come off. It's a bit like unwrapping a present. <laughs> now Go for the for the latex. Oh, that's so easy.
<laughs> you see all the flakes. This is from the from the color that we have just applied. Um, I think I will pull out all the other bits and pieces here, and then we'll be right back when uh, we go on to scrape uh, to scrape all the color off. Okay, perfect. We took the water cup a bit closer to the to our hand here because now we will have to scrub the color off in uh, certain designated areas. I will try to show it here on this uh, kneecap, how it works. So you take your, your brush, which is pretty beaten, make it a little bit wet, and then you just start to scrape over the surface. Yeah, it's, it's a really nice effect because uh, it pulls off the paint just a little and uh, the more you wet it, the the more fragile the, the white gets, so you can rub it off more easily. Mm -hmm. But since there is a little bit of the rust color in here, you might think that it also kind of affects the color that was there before, but... Yeah, I, I, maybe just just a tiny bit. Um, you can always use uh, matte varnish in between so, so to prevent that from happening. But actually, the effect is quite nice mm -hmm. um, because it looks like real rust. Yeah, I can see here. And actually, it gives these really tiny little cracks also. So what I will try to do is to scrape off um, the edges. So. Like here, the points where the most um, damage would would occur. After that is done, you just take it and hold it under <laughs> running water and rinse it off with water. Then le let it uh, dry for an hour or so, and then it will stay like that forever. Yeah, and then you can just uh, go on with your water-based color, and it won't harm the color underneath. It's a really really interesting. Uh, you can see it yeah, and, and you can use it on uh, in several different ways. Um. Yeah. Gives a really, really nice beaten, beaten effect. Yeah, it's kind of scary to uh, put your almost finished model under running water, but uh, you really have to do it to get rid of all those uh, tiny small flakes in the other parts and mm -hmm. to to make it cure. Now we go for the for the frame here. So I put a little bit of water on it to make it more fragile. It always takes a little bit until it reacts to the water, but then it's, it's pretty direct. The nice thing about it, it really leaves the paint where the paint would have would stay. So in the in the actually in the uh, underneath the rivets, just directly there. And if you paint cracks, you usually just place it somewhere, and the, this way is how it actually would look. I mean, it looks it looks a bit messy, but you can see uh, you can really take some water and just remove this these flakes, and then you get a clearer image yeah. of what will be there. It's a bit like uh, being an archaeologist <laughs> and starting to you know yeah, you to dig are, in the ground, or you are Mother Nature, just <laughs> <laughs> Father Time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's uh, different ways on how to achieve a, a weather weathered effect, but this is here really, really, really something special, I think. 
once you're done you can still come back and um, paint uh, acrylic paint on so you can uh, repaint certain areas that you wanted uh, with, with more of the color or um, add something a bit more manually and then you will have a really the best of both worlds a bit randomness and uh, yeah, a little bit of a little bit of uh, control so that's nice you can also take um, something sharp like these pliers and then just create a little like those micro cuts here so yeah you can work very precisely and it's 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 really nice that the color allows you to work on it for one hour i mean one hour is quite a lot mm -hmm. because the technique technique is rather fast that's true Yeah, really nice. Yeah, it's, we're getting there, I think. Um, I think I will just play around a bit, a bit more. Yeah, we will um, play around a bit. And afterwards, you have to, <laughs> to put it under the running water. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we'll be back then to show you how the final result looks of the white effect. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is how um, how the white looks after we scraped it off and then we actually took the whole thing and rinsed it uh, under the um, <laughs> under running water. The running yeah. water. It is a, a pretty scary moment and uh, it is better when you have a blow dryer, pre a hair dryer prepared that has also cold air. Uh, it takes a lot of time until the water comes out of every, every little uh, hiding place. So this is how it looks now. Um, pretty good, I think. Uh, a lot of people actually have problems with um, finding a natural pattern of these uh, scrape, scraped off things. And uh, with this, it comes nearly naturally. So, it's yeah. the idea. so uh, what do you do to finish off the white? Um, I will now take uh, some Devlin mud, kind of like this, um, that will help to mute down the white a little bit because it's very dominant uh, when you look at the model. The moment. Yeah. So the devil in mud is not available anymore, but um, I've lately uh, tried out the uh, army painter shades and um, the soft tone and the heavy tone might work as well. Mm -hmm. If you combine those, they they are pretty similar from the effect. Yeah. So basically, you want to cover all the the parts around the rivets and the screws here. The color kind of pulls there. Mm -hmm. And here I would say below the kneecap here. Mm -hmm. That would be really nice. And here also below the kneecap and uh, a little bit up here. Not too much, just a small touch. So here, the lower part, and then make sure that it runs here in the, in the crevices. And also here, the swan will be visible once we paint it. This one will be golden, actually, so now it's <laughs> really a bit difficult to see its shape, but it's there. Yeah, and it, it's important that uh, the uh, the devil mat just runs around the swan, so they have like a small outlining. Once we've at the once we start adding the gold, you will clearly see this effect. Yes. Okay. We let that dry, and uh, maybe we will <clears throat> apply another. Uh, we will make another run with the devil mat. Uh, we will have to see once this is dry. Yeah, I think just another yeah, a tiny bit on the like the really dark dark shadow areas with the also the lower side of the grain. Yes, here. Yeah. Because the the gold will come here, so it would it would be good if uh, there is more dark uh, area here, so the white doesn't kind of block out the gold too much. Yeah, so you have a nice contrast between the dark and the bright gold later on. The very last step 
for the white will be will be to add little spots of uh, of white where we think uh, yeah. it would, would be better to kind of make the make the shape more readable <laughs> consistent for example here i think uh, adding a li some little white tabs here and also highlight these um, flakes so they look more uh, 3d three dimensional yeah yeah but i think we will switch for the smaller brush for that here you can see the uh, sky white and uh, this is a denim stone also a foundation color um, it's like a cream with a little bit of gray in it so like this For example, here. It's a bit too bright. Just dab, dab some more color on here. And that way you can co reconnect some of these like islands. Oh, oh yeah. For example, if you look uh, here, it would be maybe a bit more brighter, these flakes, so I just add little points here and there, where the light would uh, be more visible at this yeah, point. So, so the, the highlight is also following the, the same highlight um, that, that you have on the blue, so you need to put uh, also some white on, the, on top of the, the other color. Yeah, but the effect is really awesome. Yeah, I think so too. I think I will just continue um, adding little little reflections here and there. Uh, also here on the on the knees. I think these this looks really amazing. I mean, the 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 you really understand why we put the uh, red in before here. Yeah, the rust really comes out, and it's it looks really it looks really special. So yeah, I will just continue that and. Uh, yeah, actually, this concludes our <laughs> small tutorial about the armor, right? You have seen how to make the blue armor, you've seen how to to make uh, the white armor, and um, yeah, I hope that uh, it helps you to create your own um, warjack or whatever you want to want to uh, paint. And yeah, what other gritty machine you have, you you have on the desk? <laughs> yeah. So thanks a lot for watching and um, please uh, tune in for the next uh, episode of this, the next part of this uh, project for the Pending Buddha Academy. All right. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye.